this shot. And hello and welcome to the 2023 Predator WPA World 10 Ball Championship presented by Q Sports International. We have 128 players for you today, folks. $250,000 in prize fund with 60,000 of it being going to the winner. This is the stage one race to eight 10 ball. Winner breaks, no early 10s, no 10s on the break. And the stage two, it'll be the final 32 that is going to single elimination. This is George Teixeira in the booth, joined by a rider from Billiards Digest. So we got some important people who are sitting here next to me. And Keith, Keith Paradise, folks. How you doing, George? Doing good, buddy. Doing good. Welcome. And we got Eklin Kachi and Joven Bustamante. Eklin Kachi, of course, a our 2021 WPA 10 ball champion, right here. In fact, uh, what a great job he did when he won that tournament. He was quite the champion. Has been a good one too. And Joven Bustamante from Phoenix, Arizona. 775 Fargo versus Eklund's 824. And again, a 44 year old versus this young 24 year old. Uh, past WPA number one rated player in the world. Ranked player in the world. Keith is very, being very quiet here. I'm just watching what Kachi's doing. He's off to a really good start. He put the seven ball on the side. Um, balls look pretty well spread out. Looks like he has a pretty good path here in this opening rack. Yeah, just a matter of getting to the three to the same pocket. He's got the perfect angle for it. Is he gonna bump the 10 or go just by? He's just right by it. There we go. He's, he's so, he can be so smooth, but he likes to power the ball especially on that break shot. <laughs> well, he's a, he's a big guy. I think he's about 6'5". Uh, and um, he, uh, he has that long swing. Kachi has played in five of the Pro Billiard Series events, cashing in all five, in addition to winning the Predator World 10 ball. So he's no stranger to this arena. He's no stranger to uh, this type of play under the lights. Absolutely not. And as, if you've never seen Kachi in person, if you've never seen Kachi in person, if you only watched him on video streams, mm -hmm. as big as he looks on, on camera, when you meet him, he looks even bigger. <laughs> well, he is more or less a linebacker playing <laughs> pool. Very large man, yeah. very strong. And very kind and oh, gentle one of the man. nicest and, people. Uh, he is very humble. From Albania. He actually was playing pool in Albania. He was a national champion. They asked him, they developed him into a snooker player. And then he came back to playing pool. Now he'll just go back up for the eight, come back down. He'll travel the table. Ooh, he might have. Oh, he's okay. There's a good look at the young Joven Bustamante, a distant, distant relative to the great Francisco Django Bustamante. You're saying what, third cousins? His father, His was, father third. was third cousins. Not making it easy on himself here to no, finish this rack out. As I started to say, when he came off that rail, I thought he came off pretty hot and was gonna be too far over. He's got a thin cut here, yeah, but he excels at shots like this. And you know what he excels at? <laughs> he can reach him. <laughs> Plus hit him real well. And looks like he's going to uh, open up with the first uh, first win. His opponent in the chair waiting. He's out of the Phoenix area. Uh, 775 Fargo. He's played in six events. Cashed in four. A fifth in Michigan was his highest finish. Kachi draws first blood, one nothing with a break and run in the first rack. Yeah, Jovan Bustamante is one of these players that he doesn't have a lot. Of, he doesn't have any major victories, but boy, he is always hanging around 
the top of the leaderboard towards the end of an event. Last year, he had a top five finish at the Michigan Open. He was top 10 and finished ninth at the Arizona Open. And he was a top 10 at the U.S. Open 10 ball championship. Mm -hmm. So even though there's no titles there, he definitely is a threat to Kachi and anybody really in this event. Well, and, and a good thing from there is when he first started playing these events, he was right in the area of 740 in the Fargo. He's now 775. So he's taken some scalps along the way to improve that. Absolutely. And in Phoenix, uh, every time you open up a Facebook page regarding tournaments in Phoenix, he's winning them weekly, weekly, weekly. He's always there at the top. Not easy to do. There's a lot of good pool in that area. Well, exactly. And that in addition to he's playing everybody seven games to two, seven games to three. You know, he's not playing anybody even. He can't, you can't make any mistakes at, with those. How's that for a shot? It bounced like twice afterwards. But, it, you know, he made a ball. I just That's didn't see where it went. Clear. Let's see where that ball went. Four balls straight in from the behind the one ball, so uh, good break. And if the six ball the six ball cleared, he's got an open shot on the one. What appears appears to be an open shot by the on the one think, yeah. past the nine. So the one oh everything's out in the open. If he this is a key shot right here, really. Makes this and I don't see if he makes this and gets position on the two ball, I, I can see him. I can see a clearance, and it's 2-0 without Joven getting out of his uh, seat. But it's got to get done. And there you have it. First prize money is 60000 Second is forty. So there's a hundred grand right there. Wouldn't be a bad little payday. No, that's it's a very good payday. Yeah. One of the highest paydays. Um, in the Pro Billiard Series events, or as part of it, as those events uh, lead into this one. The ranking points from 2022, uh, Keith, I mean, Keith, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joven, I believe, was th ranked 30th. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not ranked 30th. <laughs> Kachi was uh, uh, quite a bit higher. I think he was in the teens. I'll get that back for you. Uh, Fargo Raid has provided, provided us with a nice little tool it's called a head-to-head -head, um, tool. And what it does is it brings up the players. Nice cut by Kachi, getting perfect shape on the three for the side pocket. Uh, it, provides, it, it provides us with a tool that we can look at the players, and if they've played each other before, and these two have not, um, will give us the data on, on their results. And the other thing that it does, though, is all the players' uh, opponents in common mm -hmm. are there. For instance, if they both played Carlo Viado and... Uh, Kachi has a 42% win rate against Carlo. Um, it looks to Threaded me like the needle nicely there. It looks to me like Jovan is, uh, or Carlo has beat Jovan 58% of the time. So they're right on, right on um, uh, parity there, playing that. And, and I can go down the line to players they've played, uh, and overall they're not too far apart: 58% versus 47%. So Kachi being a little, having a little higher percentage against all the players in common. Mm -hmm. Nice tool. And playing on a worldwide stage the way Kachi does definitely helps him with that. You get more battle tested against those top players in big tournaments. That's right, exactly. Kachi working his way through this. And, uh, just unless he uh, slips and falls, he should complete this clearance. Come up for the eight, stop it from the nine, just make sure he gives himself a little angle to leak down for the 10 and really, it's rack number two. But this Predator Apex table, I tell you, plays very, very nice. The cloth is now uh, starting to break in, starting to bite. I actually had some time to hit some balls on, uh, on this table last night. And I'm very impressed with the way it plays. The cloth especially, the way it's so responsive. It grabs English. As new as it is, it does get the English. Uh, much better than other new cloth does. And uh, the pockets, as long as you're rolling them in at a good speed, accepts them. The rails bank nice, play, table plays solid. And of course, these uh, 
Arco's balls. Uh, I'm taking a set home with me. I think I'm gonna have to buy a set. They're just really nice. The way you said that, I thought you were just going to take a set of balls. <laughs> no. Just grab it. Just <laughs> grab a box and be like, thanks, guys. These are mine. <laughs> Don't I wish. Don't I wish. I got to pay for them just like you do with you, yep. folks. And it is. He does complete the break and run. Did he break and run the first set? Too? Yes, the he first did. One. So he's got two break and, break and runs. Okay, perfect. I, I asked that because I like to keep my own little score here, and I, I track the break and runs. And things of that nature and I see Keith over there tracking all kinds of information for his di uh, builders digest do the press releases for the world 10 ball mm -hmm. website and then I'll, I'll do a story for billiards digest in the next couple weeks yeah it's, it's funny because in the past he, uh, he has uh, put them done them overnight and he'll post them and I share them in the morning to Facebook all the time it's way easier to do them live and direct here mm -hmm. than from home where I work on the East Coast, where you're dealing with the time difference. Mm. You said Harrisburg? Yeah, I'm about two hours outside of Philadelphia. This guy's a Pittsburgh Steeler fan. No, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Oh, okay. I, thought, uh, I saw you wearing a pitch shirt yesterday. Well, I graduated from Pitt. Okay, there you go. Another four ball into the side. Three straight breaks, three straight balls into that side pocket. And uh, what's interesting to me is with the referee rack, I see a lot, you see a lot of the players that will break from the side mm -hmm. because they're afraid that if they break from the center the way Kachi does, they're not gonna pocket a ball and they're gonna sell out the rack. Kachi clearly has no fear of that whatsoever. He's going right at it, dead center of the table with the cue ball. And I'm completely with him. Like I said, I hit some balls last night and I had no problem making the ball from the middle. I liked the way the balls, they were breaking. And it was, uh, well, it was in this room. It wasn't on this table. We can't <laughs> touch this table. <laughs> Only, uh, all, it's, all it gets is match time, no practice time. The table's on the outside. There's three in this room and uh, 14 in the, uh, 13 in the other, along with the stream table in the main ballroom. Yeah, there's four ballrooms with uh, over uh, over 700, 7,000 uh, league players here, and about uh, 300 Kenny plus. gets the rub. <laughs> oh, he's in, in, in 300 plus um, seven foot predator tables. Really nice cut by him. Rubs off the five just enough to hold shape on that two ball. Yeah, but he he'll shape for the two ball for the corner. I, it would have probably been easier to play this. Well, either one, he likes it. He's okay with it. And that actually would have been a better shot because if he cut it to the side, he hits a three. He's not sure where it's going. But that's why I'm in the booth and he's out there playing pool. Looks like he has the angle to slide down for the five. Look how careful yeah. he is to get a nice angle to come back for the six. He took no chances to, try to, to get too close to that five and lose his angle. It's interesting to me, he's playing with that full eight inch extension on the back of his cue. Well, and I have one from my cue as well. He and I actually have the same cue, that mm -hmm. Predator Black. Um, I put it on for extreme circumstances because I am not the same size yeah, as him. He, Whereas he's so big, he probably needs that extension to have that cue feel a little bit more right-sized in his mm -hmm. hands. And I will say there are players like Earl Strickland, Jason Shaw, uh, a couple guys that like that extension mm -hmm. on their full time, and they say it balances out the cue better, and it just gives it makes it more stable going through. And, and to tell you the truth, I've played with a uh, part-time extension like that just to try it out and it did feel a little better and for a little bit there I played with the three inch extension and that kind of it uh, it stabilized the backhand a little bit as I'm getting ancient 
Got into a little bit of trouble here, George. What do you do? Yeah, well, he can play safe. Uh, just bang it to the center of the head, head, head rail and the cue ball to the other, uh, to the bottom rail. He used his extension already, I believe, too. Yeah, just like this. To try to get that cue ball. See, he, he placed all the emphasis on the six ball. Said, I'm going to sacrifice the cue ball. I'm just putting the six ball in the middle of the table. If he wants to bank it, knock yourself out. So decisions, decisions for Joven right here. Do you try the extreme cut shot on the six or do you return favor with the safety? Um, I think he might be going for the bank. Oh, he's going for the cut behind the eight. But he's, uh, he's leaked, oh, he's leaked the six ball in front of the pocket, but he did get cover yeah, behind the there. eight. Yeah. I don't think Kachi will waste any time in either jumping this ball. Oh yeah, he came he came prepared with his jump cue. Laid the black down, and uh, Kachi is a Predator-sponsored player. And I believe Joven is too, just recent. Missed the jump, but that's not exactly an easy shot going the length of the table, regardless of how close it is to the pocket. And plus there's a back cut. So now we get our first real opportunity to see Joven Bustamante. He'll cut this cross, cross corner and just stay there for the seven. Does it go by the seven? I think from where we're sitting, it looks like it does. It looks to, it, it looks, looks like, like that seven is far enough up the table that he can get that six ball past mm -hmm. it. It looks to me like he's thinking about playing it to the opposite pocket. Yeah, he is. That's he what he's doing. Left, yeah. I like that because the cue ball just stays right there. He's missed it. Yeah. I think it's the same shot, but if he takes the opposite corner, his cue ball's traveling towards the rail, and it, then he didn't have the angle to come back right. uh, for the seven. So I, I like that shot actually a lot. This is one thing Kachi does very well, is go back and forth on the table. He'll come straight over for the eight. It's the same little draw. He loves to draw his ball. Uh, I think it was last year he was shooting some of the, the spot shots in the Pro Billiard Series events mm -hmm. at warp speed. Hardest I've ever seen anyone shoot him. He tried a couple that way, and then he went back to the right way of shooting him. I got a, I got a kick out of that watching him do that. Ooh. Gachi is well known for uh, being in Phoenix a few years back and uh, flipping the coin with Alex Pagalayan in, in the 10 ball tournament. And uh, Alex never left this chair. 8-0. Eklund Kachi. Is he going to roll up on it? He's got perfect. No, he's he's got good. Absolutely. He's good. Perfect. He got himself in trouble getting up against that yeah. rail, but got out of it in a real hurry. That's three straight for Kachi. And, and this know, race to eight opening round. And you call him in trouble when he's up against the rail and having to elevate? Mm -hmm. He's 6'5". He's not in trouble. It's still it's below him. It's Lawrence Taylor playing pool. <laughs> uh, what an advantage to have that height. Never need a bridge. Uh, plays with a full-time full, full -time extension. Right. Only so he can slide his hand back without having to <laughs> go get the extension from the yeah, chair. There's just not enough cue for That's him. Right. He needed to add cue. That's right. Yeah, this is part of the CSI Expo, folks. Uh, uh, we just had the Alpha Las Vegas uh, Men's Open and the Women's Open. We found a new champion for, for both. And then we also have the uh, well, well, three well, cushion We're a repeat champion in the men's. That's right. I'm Victor Zielinski. I'm glad to have somebody in the booth with me to put me in order. Uh, I'm half Polish. I couldn't let you get away with that <laughs> one, George. I'm sorry. And what a feat for the 22-year-old to do. What a feat to, to repeat. With that side pocket again. 
192 uh, player field. A ball straight in. Yeah, it's he's breaking well. You and I both know it's difficult to repeat as a champion in any of these major events. It's even more difficult when you have a 192 player field. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's, he, he'll be coming up here pretty quick. He yes, comes he up will. at 4 o'clock. Uh, he'll be playing, oh my, he'll be playing the Lion, Alex Pagu Lion. One of the, yeah, one of the key matches of today's opening yeah. round. These are all opening round matches today. We have four of them. We just had one at 11, this one at 2. This is all Vegas time. So one at 4 and one at 7 p.m. tonight. Another uh, match that you have to look forward to is Coping Chung, our... Uh, 2019 champion uh, versus Skyler Woodward. What a match that will be. Cutting the ball and running the cue ball around, I think. Oh, oh, he's missed it. He hasn't left much. No. And see what uh, Joven decides to do with his only a second trip to the table. I mean, when you're stroking him as well as Kachi has been in the early stages of this match, why not go for a shot that difficult? And like you said, he's, oh. so, he's such a big person that reaching over that table, for us, we're going to need a bridge. We're going to need an extension. I think, I don't think that was that difficult for him. I think he just uh, paid more attention to coming around the 6-10 uh, for position about on the, the position two. On exactly, the yeah. He was just avoiding traffic down and out of that corner because he did wrap out, of, wrap out of there. I don't know if you saw the semifinal match of the women's um, event yesterday, but uh, the um, the shot that Christina uh, Zlateva missed. I missed that match. I, I was commentating I, the other one. I think she was trying to, she was so focused on trying to hold the cue ball for position mm -hmm. for the six ball that was at the other end that she miss the five, mm. which is a common mistake that a lot of pool players make. Okay. You're so focused on keeping the cue ball somewhere that you forget plan A, which is make the make ball. Make the ball, yeah, it's always plan A because you don't get to play your great shape uh, if you didn't make plan A. How many times do you miss the ball and you get that perfect shape? Nine Probably times out of 10 for me. Yeah. Oh, look at this nice tuck behind the four. Oh, very nice. He's up against it. Joven's in trouble here. Kachi sending him a very big message right there saying, when you come to the table, this is what you can expect. Can you get by the 10 off the bottom rail is the question. I don't, he's looking up to the top rail. He, yeah, he couldn't get, he can't get to the bottom rail to hit it. No, there's too much traffic. Yeah, too much traffic. Oh, yeah, he gave it a go, and he just cleared one more Pretty ball. Pretty good effort from there. Mm -hmm. Cleared one more ball off for Kachi, and just left it wide open. Yeah, tough when your opponent limits you to shots like that. Kachi sets up ball in hand on that one, and it looks like a little bit of congestion with that five, four, five, six, and seven, but the way he's been playing his patterns, he should be in good shape on this round. Speaking of patterns, look how nice he laid to come underneath the seven for the four. And from our vantage point, it looks like that four ball will slide by the <laughs> six. I just had to laugh there because I just called position on the four. <laughs> I didn't see the three. You know what? The first <laughs> match I commentated in Atlantic City, I started talking about position on the two ball, and mm -hmm. Tony Robles was kind enough to just watch. nudge me and say, and she's really good on that one ball to start the <laughs> round. <laughs> I yeah. Bright yellow ball in yeah. the middle of a table, and I didn't see it. Yeah, he'll try to get over from four because I think it does slide right past the six. A little shorter than he probably wanted to be. Maybe yeah. three more inches further. 
he's looking to make sure he can he can use the rail. He can slide right off the rail. Oh, he hit the six and still win. Yeah. Kachi appears to be on the verge of taking a commanding 4-0 lead in this race to eight. It's the opening round of the WPA Men's World 10 Ball Championships. First day of five championship match, semifinals and final will be on Saturday here at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Which is shockingly colder than I thought it was going to be this week. We're gonna take a small one, one minute break and be right back with you folks. back with Eklund Kachi, 2021 World WPBA, WPA World 10 Ball Champion right here in Las Vegas. Oh, we went in the opposite pocket this time. That's one or the other. I would imagine he's going to play safe here. Doesn't really have a pocket for that one ball, but what are you thinking? Park that cue ball directly behind the five? He will be up right up against the five, I would think. I think he'll put him right up against it. This is looking at something else. I just can't see what else he might want to look at because the table's completely open. Doesn't want to tie up any balls by rolling slow. Right behind Kachi is Nick De Leon, who's helped us out with some commentary here in the just the last tournament. Local play, uh, player out of Phoenix. Left a little bit of an edge, but he should be able yeah. to come off the rail and kick it that. Yeah, this is why you want to be right up against that five. Mm -hmm. and now, like you just mentioned, he can kick off, Toby can kick off of there and uh, end up with cover and save him back. Is it going to get there? No, it is not. Yeah, he didn't find any cover, but he's left a difficult shot. Long, what do you call that? Nine feet away or eight and a half? Eight and a half. You got a sharp angle and you got the cue ball closer to the rail than you would like. Mm -hmm. So. But it's also a cut shot similar to the one Kachi just missed in the previous rack. I was going to ask, I wonder if he's playing, so he's trying to go up against that eight ball. He's just taking no prisoners today. He left a, si a similar shot at the opposite end of the table. And the Albanian Prince trying to get him on that eight ball. Good shot from Joven as far as 
Safety. Did it leak? Can you see it? Leak? Looks like it because he doesn't yeah. have his jump cue in his hand. Well, and he's not even really. Well, now he is pondering. He, he can. I don't think he would be jumping this ball. He'd have to have the ball in the air four feet and land it. And then there's no way you can power that ball up and uh, keep it on the table. Prove me wrong. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw a double jump here last year, didn't we? Yes, we did. And it, to tell you the truth, when we saw that double jump uh, at the beginning of that tournament, uh, I was on the table with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was practicing his jump shots, and he was practicing that very same <laughs> double jump. And all of a sudden, I'm in the booth calling. What a great shot from the young he man. He just cut that right in. Yeah, yeah, man. <coughs> and he's gotten, he's found perfect position. Akachi making pretty quick work of this rack and pretty quick work of this match. Yeah, he has, he has been in control the entire way. Well, he started out with two break and runs. Um, Usually a great formula for controlling controlling a match. It's been interesting over the years to watch the evolution of his pace of play. Oh, if you'll recall, about five years ago, he was deliberately slow. Um, and he's, you know, not that he's going to win a speed pool tournament anytime soon, but he plays at a really nice, deliberate pace now. Every now and then he tests the end of a shot clock on a difficult shot. But for the most part, he, is, he has gotten much quicker in his decisiveness. Uh, without sacrificing smoothness, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah, he's got a great flow in this game. Though. You're perfectly right. Just great to point it out, too. Because really I, rem I remember being down in Norfolk at the, uh, at that time, it was still the U.S. Open. He lost to uh, Jason in the finals. And I remembered watching his semifinal match, and he was taking so much time in between shots. Mm -hmm. I think that match is still going on. <laughs> like it was that live. It went on for close to three hours. Wow. wow. And that's where the, I think it was what, a 40, uh, 45 second shot clock at that time, 30 seconds? Uh, I know, I'm not sure what the shot clocks are. I'm just accustomed to this one being 30 seconds. And this, I think this, this may have helped him with his uh, pace of play. Uh, his pace wasn't always slow though. I, I, I do recall uh, when I the very first year when he was ranked number one in the world, with him, that's when he was in Phoenix, uh, his pace was very decent, nice flow to it. But after that, I, I, I saw him take a lot of criticism for his pace of play. A rare dry break from Kachi. And when you talk to players that this is what they're afraid of when you break from the center of the table and you don't make a ball. A lot of times you can sell out. You can see, Jovan Bustamante with a pretty nice window of opportunity on that one ball. Well, his time has run out. If, it, if, he not, if he's not able to take advantage of this opportunity, he may not see many more. Bojek Shevchek, our 2022 champion here, and uh, Christof Christopher Tevis. Uh, was the runner-up, and what a fine match we were treated to that year. And of course, 2021 was Ekwin Kachi and Naoyuki Oi. Quite the match there. In 2020, we got kicked out prior, just prior to this tournament, the day before. Uh, we finished with the uh, Las Vegas Open, and uh, COVID hit. Jung Wing Chang won that yeah. Las Vegas Open. And al along with, uh, with a, a power outage, yeah. remember that? That was 2021. The power, the power outage, outage was? 20, was 21. 
Oh, I, that's because I. Yeah, the Kachi was standing there in the finals. Yeah, still playing. That's because okay. I was doing the yep. I was doing the write up remotely, and my YouTube feed went down, <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, "Well, this is a fine predicament. How <laughs> how can you write about a tournament you can't watch?" Yep. And then you know later you know social media did what it does, and I found out that the power was out. I guess a rare thunderstorm had come through the area and knocked out the power. Let's see if Jover can, can, can get around this four ball to get position on his five. He's looking to either cut it in the side or send it to the corner, and he might have to come up. If he send it, goes to the corner, he might have to come up, but I'm pretty sure he's going to send it to the side pocket and play the five in the same pocket. Or opposite pocket, excuse me. I think he was concerned about the scratching of the side pocket if he went down to the corner. Yeah. Well, he's got an excellent, he's in, he's in line here. Let's see if he can stay in line for these last uh, six balls and put his first mark on the scoreboard. He's, a, oh, he's yeah. coming oh. up a little short. It cuts to the side or it banks to the, uh, to the opposite side. See what Jovin chooses. Now Jovin's been sitting in his chair for so long; he's probably not loose. Is the only reason he hasn't shot yet. <laughs> he is a very rhythmic player. Into the side, he cuts it, and he's nice, nice play on the with his cue ball. He's got a long way to come back, but I was going to say. First shot into that side pocket, the cue ball didn't travel far enough. Second shot into that side pocket, it traveled too far. He's in good shape, though. Bring it over one rail and then come back over for the eight. Either that or he can, go, he can wrap out of the corner. Oh, he didn't wrap out of it. I like just hitting the bottom rail first, then the side rail coming up for the eight. Um, he's still in, he's still in he's pretty still good shape. Is. And he has an angle to get across the table for the nine. So, not what he wanted, but it's still manageable. He'll make it work. And then just drag this a little here. Get on the ten. And he will, uh, Wow, maybe he won't right from this from this view. He's got a little bit of a tough, tough shot. Nice. What a nice shot! What a pretty shot that was. And this ten ball, a little bit of a tester here. It is, especially for sitting in the chair that long. I thought he ended up perfect on there and looked again. That second glass and glance it wasn't so much. There you go. <laughs> he just fired it in and the skew ball's okay. And uh, he gets the first mark on the board and an appreciative crowd is it lets him know we want this to continue. Make some more. That stops the bleeding. Yes. That stops Kachi's run. Big difference between 5 1 and 6 0. Yeah. And it also sends a message to Kachi. Uh, see, I can work with an open table, too. 2019, Coping Chung won this, won this event. The runner up was Joshua Filler. That was a great match. Nip and tuck the whole way. And Josh just left a couple openings and. Little Co just wandered right through. Yeah, well now he's not Little Co anymore. He's not Little anymore. But uh, he's still the smallest of the three. <laughs> uh, it was fascinating after the pandemic to see everybody again. And I think that the biggest change was <laughs> in Copen Little Hunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Copen Hunt's uh, about six foot, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Fall? No, but 
unfortunately for uh, got cover Jordan. on that one ball. Just got cover on the one. Uh, two ball almost went in, but uh, not much. Catch it and kick and stick him right there. I take this yeah. shot. You can kick and stick it right. You can go rail first too. And I, <laughs> Katsy plays very aggressive. He can, if he thinks he can make that uh, rail first shot, he's going to go for it. Looks like it's going to be the kick and stick. Yeah. Very controlled, very precise. Beauty of a safety like that is you don't have to do a lot with it. Just get the speed right. It really is. And you know, in today's, with today's youth and their jump cues, that safety has been almost lost. That kick and stick on the head rail. Um, used to be a standard safety play. He better. I say he nearly had a time file there. Ah. I he was down to three seconds. Was it? Yeah. I didn't hear it chirping. I didn't hear the clock chirping. Oh, beautiful, beautiful safety back. He caught the he caught the top of the ball just like he wanted to. We get to where he's at now. I think he has cover. This will tell us. No, he left a he left an edge. Left an edge. And he's found cover. Easy kick. But it looks like he's got some cover, certain cover. The thing about it is he's got to kick this to try to get the cue ball onto the seven because that one's going to run into two and kind of stay there. Some kind of speed, nice speed. Oh. Uh oh. Is there a rail? It's not an issue, so apparently there was a rail. He's called the eight. shot because the two ball goes towards the other pocket for position and the eight ball goes right in if he executes it perfectly. And um, really nice play there. This just opened up this rack to where it takes an error. Some societies it takes a village and some pool games it takes an air. <laughs> so yeah, Kachi appears to be well on his way to a six one advantage. Looking at some other scores that are going on in the tournament. Omar Al Shaheen and Daniel Massiel tied 3 3. It's over on table number nine. Massiel, quite the player. So is Omar. 
defending champion Wojciech Chajcik is up 5-2 on Khalid Al-Gamadi. Al-Gamadi? Al-Gamadi. His fellow countryman, Matus Snegaki, 6-0 over Jesus Atencio, he of the double jump. Snega Snegaki may, plays May want to pull well. a couple of those out sometime soon. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, Snegaki hasn't given him any opportunity to, to jump at anything. That Polish team is so strong. As they go like eight deep. Yep. Yep. And speaking of eight, this is going to get into six. And we'll be at six one in a race to eight. Joven is Joven has run out of time. He's got to make a move. He's yeah. got to get to the table. And this man in the chair, you're looking at, uh, has to break dry for him. To let him out of that chair because he's done a good job of maintaining control. Well, he, you know. <laughs> Joven's biggest mistake in this match apparently was losing the lag. Because <laughs> Kachi broke and ran twice. Yep. And I mean, in a race to eight, that's 25% of your workload right there. Gotcha set to break. And an attempt to get on the hill. So the four and a six ball track towards the side pocket again, but nothing fell. And I don't the believe he has Good much news for Kachi is did not leave a shot. Yeah. Seven ball is blocking the cue ball for the one. So he's going to push. Well, so far on this table, we had an 8 0, and now we're looking at a 6 to 1. Yeah, Thorsten. Yeah, Thorsten, Thorsten over uh, the, a top Vietnamese player. The, the young man from Vietnam showed up and three minutes prior to the match hit maybe six shots. Didn't get used to the table at all, missed five or six kicks and didn't run more than four balls. Just cold as could be. He's giving it back. Actually wants no parts of it. He was thinking about it though. I actually, uh, I don't mind this too much coming across the face of the one banking it right towards that 10 past the three taking the cue ball back to the middle of the table let's see what he does with it he just banks it past the nine uh, so that he can't get past the six eight for the pocket and leaves no pocket for it actually has a jump shot but what are you going to jump to Tell how much you can see if you can see an edge of it. If you can see it, see an edge of it, you can go off the side. That's what it looks like he's doing. Or is he kicking at it one rail? Looks like he's going right at it. Yeah, he is. Oh, he could see the whole ball. Yeah. And actually, at least most of it. Yeah. He, he, he does not like that one. No, that came back up. It's going to bite him. And looks like he was trying to push that cue ball down to the end rail. And then pin the, or excuse me, push that one ball down to the end rail and pin that cue ball. Well, one more chance for Joven to go, to go to work here. Just get past the 10. There we go. Now things open up. I think he's got a shot on, he can get a shot on the six, so there's room between that eight and six. Extension time. Both players playing with wood and not carbon fiber. Both players sponsored by Predator, so I'd be curious to see what shaft they're using. Probably the I thought I think I saw Kachi's as advantage. Advantage three, if I'm not mistaken. 
And I would assume that Jones uh, the same. But I'm assuming. Oh, oh, I also would assume that he would have made that. So now you know how well I assume. Well, you know Ouch. what they say about assuming. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of why I emphasized it. I was waiting for you, waiting to see if you were going to. Uh, I, I, I was picking up what me. you were putting down. <laughs> I, I was raking what you were leafing, okay? Oh, there you go. You like That's that? Good I like that. I mean, it wasn't an easy cut shot for, for no, Bustamani, no, it but it also wasn't treacherous either. It's going to be even more treacherous if Kachi clears this table and takes a 7-1 advantage. I think the only hope for Joven here is that six ball. And as you can see by the that view of the camera, if he gets in the middle of the table, he should be all right. He should be okay. Powered that one a little bit, and uh, it's going to come out okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty elaborate way to play a safety, but that's exactly what he just did in the sense. Well, sometimes you know, you, when you're when you're in the chair as 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 Joven's been, you kind of have a tendency of feeling like you know, you don't deserve that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, toss a toss a crumb once in a while. He'll go to the left side, uh, bottom side of it and go back be behind the seven with the cue ball. Oh, he lacks some, some pace. He's giving it up again. And this man here at the table doesn't need seconds. No. where that all important position comes into play. Lane perf. Well, no, he's a little straight. And he's, he's got to go up and back down again. He's pretty straight. How straight is he? Can we get that camera angle? There it is. Yeah. Very straight. Oh. oh. Hello. Trying to, he was trying to break it because he, he couldn't get to the middle of the table. He really couldn't. Well, I think he was trying to draw back for the set. He was I'm sure we'll get a replay of that. Yeah, he he was trying to break this ball. I think. I think with that kind of power, he was trying to come into it. Yeah. Yeah, because he could. Which I don't know why he didn't yeah. need to. All he needed to do. I mean, if you're going to draw the ball, you could have drew it back a foot and a half. Yeah, but it didn't get him where he had to get. It, it still kept him above the eight. You think? So that, yes, I, I really do. He had to be right in the middle of the table, no higher than that. Otherwise, the eight ball had the six ball blocked. I thought there was enough distance okay. between the eight and the six. Yeah. And we, I mean, that's we're yeah. sitting over here for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, once he was straight in, I, uh, I had a feeling it was going to be tough. Oh, this isn't ideal either. One thing we can agree on is when you're going to draw back like that, you do bring the side pocket into play. And I don't know if you heard it. It sounded like he miscued. It did. It did sound. It, it did sound uh, like a miss hit. Not sure if he has enough angle to follow, or if he has to come back a little bit too. Well, he's faced with a little bit of a challenge here. It's a bit more than a little bit, so it's a bit of a challenge. Oh, that's very much a challenge. Yeah, he's got a steep cut. Especially when you're trying to make a comeback. He's got a steep cut, and he's got to avoid the corner pocket. He should, either way. And he oversteeped it. 
But let's see if Crouchy takes a straight bank. He's looking at. I was going to say, do you go for the bank here? That's why I was wondering. Depends on what he has for a cut, and that's what I think you step back to look at. Is the cut? How far out is that? Can't tell from here. Drummer, as you can see, is disappointed. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. He cut it right in. He had in. the cut. He okay. had it right in. With perfect speed. Oh, no, but he came right up on top. Well, he, oh, how about that rub? Perfect how speed. How about that rub? <laughs> nice rub. That's when it's going your way. Yep. <laughs> and this puts him at seven. <laughs> Only given up one game to his opponent. Gachi has been in complete control of this um, this match. A young man from Albania. He's uh, now a pool a pool room owner. He I heard you mention that. I he he he's got a great looking place. It looks uh, from what I've heard is just it's all predator uh, tables, isn't it? Yeah, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's all done. He must have a connection well. there. You think? <laughs> Well, the only connection he wants to make is with that one ball and those two yeah. balls right behind it going in the side pocket. Five balls down. That was one of the two. Shot on the one. Shot on the one. Everything is spread out. I'm not sure the six goes by the eight, so they have to find a pocket for the six. But other than that, everything is wide open. Yeah. Ten balls in the way for the yep. other pocket. Joven might want to start making dinner plans. Well, it is at this stage, in stage one, it is double elimination. It is double elimination. So you can come back. And there wouldn't be a match tonight anyway. They'll have to win the next four matches to get to stage two and be part of the final 32. 250 thousand dollars up for the taking with 60 thousand to the winner well, there you have it 17 through 32 if you get to be part of that final 32 is a two thousand dollar payday even if you don't uh -oh, what fun. did we do here oh he makes this all day and he'll get underneath the six to play it down down table on top of it right yep yeah. There you have. It. Oh, he bumped. Nope, never mind. He bumped it, and now he's forced to play the six ten combo, which does not count. Right. There's no early tens. It gets respotted. See if he remembers. That's it. Let's see what his reaction is after he makes it. We'll see if he remembers it or not. But it's it's a spot on combo as combos go, but a lot of distance between them. Uh oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> see, I was interested to see that. <laughs> they just got done, folks, they just got done playing the Alpha Las Vegas Open where early tens do count in our win. They don't count on the break, though, but in WPA rules, it's got to be the last ball pocketed. But when things are going your way, they're really going your way. By making the combination, the six ball rolled down to the rail. He had a perfect angle yeah. to pocket that. And yeah, it was lined up very, yeah. very nice for that. So it wouldn't have made any difference whether you knew or not. But that, that was a little uh, comical because we knew what was happening. Uh, him, not so much. The look on Bustamante's <laughs> face uh -uh. Is, is priceless where he's shaking his yeah. hand and also saying, I don't think we're done here, dude. Yeah. I think I think we have a little bit of a ways to go. Well, it was kind of funny, but didn't change anything. Right. Got you still at the table. Very commanding performance by him yes, this afternoon. Actually, that'd be a good highlight just because of the reaction. Yeah. Uh, it was at the eighth, uh, ninth game. And Cachi moves on to round two. Jolin Bustamante goes into the one loss side. Races to eight, uh, stage one. 
This is George Tech and Keith Paradise. Keith, thank you very much for uh, jumping in the booth for us. George, thanks for having me. Let's do it again real soon. You bet. And we'll be back, folks, with another match at uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. today. Yep.